Welcome on in to Eagle Vision here. Brian Nemirovsky with head football coach Ron English on signing day 2010. Coach, 23 guys. Uh, when you combine a few who are already here and the rest of the guys coming in, what's your overall feeling on your second full class? Well, it's, uh, I like the class, and I like the fact that we addressed our needs. That's really the most important thing about it. We addressed our needs. We got some size in here and, uh, and some very athletic uh, skill position players. Nine players listed on either the offensive line or the defensive line. Talk about the quality and the depth that you hope to add up front here. Well, we added some. What we do when they come on a visit is we, uh, we height and weight them. And then we do it with uh, pro style, so they take their shoes off. And so those are legitimate heights and weights. And so uh, we, we know that we got some big guys. On the defensive line, it seems like more of a junior college focus, yep. and then the offensive line maybe a little bit more room to grow those yep, guys. Yep, exactly right. Uh, the, you know, the, it's hard to get high school DTs that are big and, and uh, athletic, but at the junior college, le college level, because everyone does not recruit those guys, uh, we thought we'd fare better. And uh, historically, at some other places I've been, we've done that, and, and uh, we've ended up with some real good players. So uh, we decided to do the same thing here. You hear coaches say all the time that to really build a program, you've got to out-recruit yourself. You've got to get a better class in year two than you had in year yeah. one. Do you yeah. feel that you've done that? Well, this is our first uh, time having a full recruiting season. So uh, when you do that, the real reality of recruiting is, is evaluation is where it starts. And we've done a great job of evaluating. In fact, uh, there were some players uh, that uh, we thought we may offer that we ended up not liking as well once we had them on a visit or uh, once we saw them play late in their senior year. So I think we've done a good job of evaluating players. That's obviously the first step then from there, developing relationships with players and families and coaches and things like that. Talk about uh, some of your key guys out on the road in the different regions and what your coaches were able to do uh, to get these guys here. Well, we have some, some guys. Uh, I think the whole staff worked hard because we really did it together. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Martin, our president, did a terrific job. She hosted uh, dinners every week, and she was so personable. And, uh, you know, there are not many presidents that do that. And so she was fantastic. I think you did a great job. You did a great job when you uh, did your media presentation, and that's the truth. And so I think uh, Dr. Gregg was awesome. He met with the recruits. And so it was more than just our staff, but it was really everybody involved. Uh, with this program, and obviously I feel like our staff, I told them today, I really appreciate the work that they did and the evaluation process and then following up and building relationships and then closing the deal. How much does a, an 0-12 season come up in recruiting, and how do you address what happened last year? Uh, we, we don't address it unless they bring it up. Now, obviously you have to have a feel for that particular family and if that's affecting them, but I think that everybody kind of knew what we stepped into, and I think the reputation of our staff spoke for itself. And I think that the players and the families just really felt like we were going to turn this thing around, particularly when they came on campus and saw the commitment level uh, of the leadership here. So it was, uh, it really, it affected us probably in one or two cases, but really overall it really did not. I think that we built trust with the people we recruited, and they felt like we were going to get this thing turned around. Well, let's get a little bit deeper into the individual guys you're bringing in in this class of uh, 23. Some familiar names to fans, guys who were recruited a year ago. Also, uh, brother, you know, Kinsman Thomas's brother coming up from South Carolina. Uh, maybe just for, for starters, what are the names that rise to the top of the list in your mind in terms of your familiarity and your expectation of guys who can play right away? Uh, well, really, I... Uh... I, it's interesting because when you ask me that question, there's not really one guy. I'm really, really pleased with the overall class. The class, And what I'm pleased about is we evaluated properly. We took guys that we wanted to take. We didn't take marginal guys. We didn't take guys we didn't want. We took guys we wanted to take. And, in fact, we still saved two scholarships for guys later on. And that is an indication that we just were not going to take guys to fill numbers. And so, I, I obviously, you know, I like big guys. I like big linemen. And I like these linemen. Uh, one of the last guys we got, Lincoln Hansen, is, a, I mean, that guy's an absolute stud. He's 6'6", 309, and uh, had a chance to go to Nebraska, and they offered him, you know, in Nebraska's walk-on program, you know, they offer you a scholarship wow. if you're one of those type of guys. And he was a guy that they offered a scholarship down the road two years and he decided to come here and that was a big big get for us and uh, there are many many more linemen on there that I feel that way about the JC kids particularly on the defensive side they're going to be big tackles that can run and play 
moving back from the line, you've got uh, Caleb Goodwin, Darius Moffitt, two yeah. guys who were here a year ago, Latarius Thomas. Well, who they weren't here. That's a misnomer. They were not here. They were props. And so, yeah, they were on campus, but they were not a part of this program. So really, they're coming into this class, and this is what really their class. And their clock is going to start now. It didn't start then. So, no, they were not here. They're here now. They're part of this class. And and they are, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're what they're supposed to look like. I mean, Caleb Goodwin is a, a 6'1", 6'2", guy who's 195 pounds today and can run. And he will play early. And Moffitt is, uh, was recruited, as you well know, by most of the uh, – uh, Big Ten, and uh, so that just speaks to his ability. So obviously we're really excited to plug one in at linebacker and one in in secondary. And Latarius Thomas, a guy who was not only here on campus but also practicing a whole lot yeah. uh, with your club, does he step in right away, you project? Well, Latarius Thomas is a, is a pro-type player. I mean, there's no question about that. There's uh, Does he step in? That's not even the question. There's going to be no safety in this league like Latarius Thomas. So uh, to have a guy like that come out there and play is just going to be – I wish we had him more than one year, but <laughs> I'm happy to have him one year. Some exciting stuff coming for the Eagles. The last uh, couple of minutes here with Coach English, and let's talk a little bit about kind of what's here and, and what that means you still need for the future. Only one quarterback in this class, and yep. nobody listed at running back. I know that can change, yep. but two big skill positions there with only one player listed. Well, uh, yeah, there's one player listed, and so we can leave that at that. But uh, I, there's more coming. I, I, I feel it. real good about the running back position, particularly uh, with what uh, we're uh, going to have coming in here. We'll make another announcement in the summer, and we'll have some more players coming in here. I think. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, we do wish we had another quarterback, and we just really did not have a spot to give to another quarterback right now. And we only have three scholarship players on the roster, and that is a little bit of a concern. Uh, but they're all talented kids, young kids, and, and uh, so uh, we just have to do a good job of recruiting walk-ons to come here and, and show that they have an opportunity to play, and we'll address that as we go further. And I do wish we had more quarterbacks. Also on the, the geography, uh, big presence in Illinois, big presence from the national areas that yep. you've gone, yep. but not as much of a presence from Michigan. Yep. I guess maybe what fans want to know is, are we still in good with the Michigan coaches well, for down the I road? I don't know that Eastern Michigan's ever been in good with the Michigan coaches. I think that they've taken the seconds and thirds and fourths, and we just cannot afford to do that. We can't take the seconds and thirds and fourths. We've got to get that player that can win the MAC championship. That being said, we offered about eight Michigan kids and went hard. I think Tyrone Wheatley, uh, I tell everybody this, you know, I, I brought Tyrone in uh, just a couple of days ago because I was concerned about him. And I asked him, do you, you know, are you okay? Do you still want to recruit the state? And he said, Coach, we're making headway. When we go into these schools, now all of a sudden these coaches are calling me. They're telling me about players where before that was not the case. So we'll do a good job in Michigan. I'm very pleased with Tyrone Wheatley. I think he recruited hard and he did everything right. We offered about eight kids and we only got one. And, and I just think that the kids growing up in this state have to feel like we're a school they want to go to. And the only way we're going to change that is by winning games. But we are uh, – every coach had a part of this state. I don't think that if you surveyed the coaches, they would say we weren't in their schools. And we want Michigan kids. It would behoove us to have Michigan kids. And we want Michigan kids in here hard, and we're not abandoning the state. And I think Tyrone Wheatley is going to do a great job. And I think in the future we'll, you'll see many more Michigan kids on our rosters. A foundation being laid, and then the wins start, and that adds to it. Well, before we let you go, Coach, i gotta got to get this right. Jeremy Cutler is uh, listed as a punter and a defensive Can you tackle. believe that? <laughs> 38 yards a punt. Average. He was the starting punter for Cerritos J.C., and this is the crazy thing about Jeremy. I had him in camp at Michigan a couple years ago as a freshman in high school. Well, Jeremy, uh, his dad, 6'7", 6'8", played uh, uh, one year for the Lakers, was a great college player. And yeah, so I keep, wait, I keep waiting for him to grow. Now, he's 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 but he's 274. He's extremely athletic, and we have a position for him where we're going to play him. And so, you know, uh, we wish he was a little bit taller, but he's so explosive and so athletic, and he has athletic genetics, and so we decided to take him. But, uh, yeah, he's, he tells me he wants to be the punter, so we'll see. Could give a very different look, literally, to the EMU uh, kicking game coming up this season. Well, Coach, uh, we know that your family and the rest of the families of the coaches well, are looking forward to having you back, yep. but congratulations on a productive recruiting season. Oh, no, it's been great. This is going to be a really good class, and we're excited. 
Ron English with us on signing day. For details on all of the signees, visit emueagles.com.